Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this one, I am going to introduce you to a tool that can generate good CMake projects for you. If for some reason you don't like the templates that I have given you, or if you want to go a step further, this is something that can give you a good starting point. It is a tool whose job is to generate CMake projects for you. Let's go to the GitHub page of this project. It is right here. And they say that it is a project initializer. It is going to be generating CMEC projects for you. And uh, they may be using fetch content, but it is also possible to use the package managers that we have grown to know and love. You can use a VC package or Conan if I remember correctly. This tool is based on Python, so you need Python installed. And to install it, you say pip install cmakenet. If I remember correctly, this is how you install it through the Python package manager. It supports a lot of things, many of which we have talked about, but you see that it also supports a few other things. For example, Clang Tidy, these are static analysis tools that I don't really want to get into. You see they support Clang format LCAV. This is something that is going to tell you how much of your code is tested. But again, I'm not going to talk about that here. If you need this covered in a future tutorial, please let me know in the comments below. I can do a tutorial about it. I can also do tutorials on these static analysis tools. I didn't want to get you confused in these starting stages of having a fairly big and comprehensive CMake project. So we're going to be using this. We're going to install it using pip and you need Python installed, of course, and we will see what we can do with it. Let's see if we can generate a VC package or Conan project. And the way you use it, you say Conan, or we can even see the documentation for it. So let's explore things together. I am going to hop over into the folder for this episode in my file system here, and I am going to open a terminal window. So let's do that. Open a terminal preview window, and we will just say CMake or we can say pip install cmake init. We can do that. It is going to tell me that it is already installed, but if it's not installed, it is going to install for you. So we have it. We can say cmake init and help. And we should see what we need to specify here. You say cmake init. You can... Uh, specify no clang ID, no CPP check or whatever, but you need to specify a path that it is going to be generating the project in. So let's say we wanted to create a project named rooster. So we can say cmake init and say rooster. Okay, it is going to ask me the project name. The project is going to be rooster. It is going to ask me the version. I can hit enter. And it is going to ask me the description and I am going to say this is a starter C++ project, project using CMake. Okay, we can say this. It is going to ask me the home page. I can put it in or I can just hit enter. Which standard do I want? I can use C++20 because this is the best it is offering. What kind of target do we want to create? Is it an executable? Is it header only? Is it a static or shared library? It is an executable. So let's say E here and add Clang tidy to local dev preset. We don't want Clang tidy because we haven't talked about that. We don't want CPP check. We want a package manager. So we want Conan or VC package. If you want Conan type C, if you want VC package type V, Let's do VC package, why not? And the project is going to be generated and you can see it in the folder that was generated for us. It is right here. So you can open this right inside Visual Studio Code. So let's do that and come back to our folder and drag and drop this on top of Visual Studio Code. Okay, we have the project here. And the first thing I want to do is to try and build it and see if I can actually work with this. You can see that it has generated a CMake preset file for me. And this is one of the things I use this tool for. It's going to give me a starting good CMake preset file so that I don't have to write it manually. You can really get things wrong and this is going to help a lot. Even if you don't care about CMake and it, it is going to give you things that you may use in other places in your code. 
So let's try to configure this. We're going to select a configure preset and you see we have a lot of them. I think the most relevant to what I want to do is dev when 64. Let's try to use this and see what we get. Hmm, what happened here? So this is a VC package project and uh, what is going to go wrong here? Uh, let's see what is going on because we need to be able to fix these problems here. Error while VC package rooster is not a valid package name. Package name must be lowercase. So let's change this to rooster lowercase and try to use the preset again. So let's try to do that. Select configure preset and do dev and select a bold preset. And uh, we should have a few bold presets here. We don't have some defined in our CMake presets file. So we only have a configure presets here. So let's see what we get. Build preset default and view command palette, select a test preset, which is also going to be default. This is going to fail miserably for us. I think the problem we have here is the baseline because VC package cares about things that they call baseline. And this has to be the commit that you used to download VC package. How can we find this out? You can go in the location where you installed VC package. In my case, it is C and VC package. And you can do git log. So let's open a terminal here and say, uh, why not visible? So we are in C VC package. We can say git log one line. And this is going to give me the commits. We say, we can say git log. Let's hit Q and do git log so that I see my commits in full. You need to grab the hash for the last commit. Let's grab it, copy it, and put it in our project as a baseline. This is what you need to put here. I am not going to go into the whys of why we need a baseline, but you really need it. Let's nuke our build directory so that we have a good starting point. Can we delete it? Let's see, yes, we can delete it. Okay, so let's try to configure again, view, command palette, select configure preset, and this time let's select dev and see how this goes. Let's view command palette, select bold preset. We have dev, dev looks promising here. So view command palette, select test preset, and we need to select the dev here. And notice that we don't have the status bar. Why is that? It is because we didn't add the VS code folder in the project that we just generated. So let's do that. We can go where we have our project generated here and we can steal the settings file from one of the projects that we have done earlier. So let's go to 32 VC package template. We can steal this folder here and put it back in the project that we have just generated. Let's maximize it and paste in this folder. And if we open Visual Studio Code, we should have a status bar that we can work with. This is something you need to do. Let's try to build the project and see what we get. We have everything configured. We are using the dev preset that was given to us by this project here. And we have rooster.exe if we run. We need to select what we want to run and we should see the output here. Hello from Rooster. You see that we can build this project. If you want to add another dependency, you can see that it is using catch2 as a dependency 340. If you want to add your own dependency, for example, you can go down here and say SFML and it is going to be brought in and you can link against it and do whatever it is you want to do with it. Let's go down. You see that it is going to tell us that we have access to FMT. We have access to SFML, which is really good. We have access to catch to you can we can use these libraries and you can try and use the testing features that are provided by this. I think this also provides Doxygen by default. So if we go in docs, you see we have pages, we have about I don't know how they are configuring Doxygen, but if you don't like how they do it, you can use the technique we have seen in our templates and all that is going to work. Let's see if we can run a C test. Okay, it's going to be running a few tests. And if we go here, these are the tests that we have you can run and the test is going to go through. This is a really good starting point. 
We generated a VC package project, but nothing prevents you from generating a Conan project and see what you can learn from it. This is really all I had to share in this video. If you want to learn more about this tool, please read the documentation. You can use it as a starting point and it is going to save you some time. Even if you don't plan to use this extensively, it is still going to give you a good starting point and you can modify it in the direction where you want your project to go. If you found this video useful, please remember to do the usual. Leave a comment to let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe. Tell YouTube that this video is really good if you think it is good. I am stopping here in this video and I will see you next time.